Continuing over on the next page, Mr. O'Connor Sudo was not deemed to be credible source of information concerning the terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001. Also, in conclusion, <coughs> excuse me, in view of the FBI's documented efforts to accommodate Mr. Reconosuto and complete lack of credibility information he has provided in addition to the numerous FBI sources that have been spending, spent investigating Reconosuto's allegations, no additional contacts will be made with him. In the event Mr. Reconosuto has information he would like to provide to the FBI, he may do so by sending it to the nearest FBI field office. I hope this information is helpful in responding to your uh, constituent. I am recurring your enclosures as requested. Now, Michael Reconosuto, let me get this straight. He furnished information about forthcoming terrorist activity. He said he furnished the names of the, of the person in the United States uh, who was behind this movement. He said he had other information, by the way, but he did not want to provide this additional details until he was granted immunity. And the FBI never bothered to come back and talk to him about the additional information he had. They never attempted to give him any immunity. They never wrote to anybody in the in, in the authority in an effort to obtain immunity for Michael and then follow up with this information. Michael gave them this information in March 20th. The incident occurred on September the 11th, and he has no credibility. Unbelievable. I have in front of me a um, article dated June 27. Uh, Boston Globe, Boston, Massachusetts. And in uh, this article, Mr. Mefford testifies before Congress. And here's what he says. The FBI is conducting investigations into Al-Qaeda and affiliated terrorist groups in 40 states, placing urgency on finding any sleeper cells that could mount large, could, that could mount any uh, large-scale attacks, a senior official said yesterday. Larry Mefford, assistant director of the FBI's counterintelligence division, said after appearing before the Senate Judiciary Committee panel on terrorism that the investigations range from the people identified as al-Qaeda operatives to uncorroborated tips from citizens. He goes on and stated before Congress, the network remains the most serious threat to U.S. interests both at home and overseas. Mefford told the panel that network includes groups committed to the international jihad movement and it has demonstrated the ability to survive attacks. The United States, in the United States, the FBI worries most about it has not definitely located members of al-Qaeda cells who might be able to pull off an attack like the 19 hijackers who flew planes into buildings on September the 11th, 2001. I want to also mention that Michael told the FBI, Mr. Kutri, in March of 01, uh, that his source in New Jersey had information about uh, sleepers around the country and uh, Michael had the information about the identity of 30 skyjackers who were going to be involved in uh, this attack. There were to have been six skyjackings, not four. The other two planes uh, did not take off apparently because FAA grounded the airplanes after the first four uh, were in flight. And uh, Michael said he had the knowledge about not only their true identity, but also the false identification that they were using. Uh, as a result of my uh, attempts to arouse Congress, the Senate, uh, and to pass out several hundred of these, this report, copies of this report to various uh, official agencies. I received a couple of responses. One senator from Nevada, Senator Harry Reid, said, thank you very much. By the way, check my website. Uh, it'll, you'll see what I stand for. Uh, you know, uh, mother, apple pie, chivalry, and hot dogs. Uh, I had another uh, letter from a congressman who referred the matter to Senator Boxer. Boxer had already received a copy of my report, as did Senator Feinstein. And then I had a letter from uh, the Central U.S. Attorney, Central District of California, who said that it's not within his jurisdiction. The matter uh, should be referred to the U.S. Attorney in Las Vegas, Nevada. This is a matter that should be referred to the Department of Justice, Washington, D.C., and it was referred to the Department of Justice, Washington, D.C. Now, <clears throat> later, after I disseminated all these reports in Washington, D.C., I sent a separate letter to President Bush 
And what I said in my letter there was, hey, I've been harassed. And as a matter of fact, I had an individual, uh, I found an individual in the basement of the complex where I uh, stay in Los Angeles and I ran him out of there. He was a biker type with bandana, headband, a leather jacket, chains uh, down to the floor, to the ground. And it was after this, after I ran him out of there, that I realized, this was in April, by the way, uh, and I made a police report on this, and I wrote a letter to the president, and I pointed this out to him, that I'm being harassed, and I assume I'm being harassed uh, and followed because of my activity in this regard, meaning uh, 911 and my contact with Michael Reconosuto. I received a letter back, and by the way, I also attached my intelligence 911 report to the president, and here's the letter I received back. So the president's aware of this, at least one of his aides is. I don't know the extent of uh, uh, this, that if it got to his desk or not, but it should have something of this uh, seriousness. And there's the president's letter response to me acknowledging this. <laughs> Further reviewing the matter, I obtained a copy of the uh, final report, December 10, 2002, joint inquiry by the Congress, uh, findings and conclusions. And this is, uh, I won't read the whole report, it's too lengthy, but here's a couple of excerpts that I'll read to you. While the intelligence community has amassed a great deal of valuable intelligence information regarding Osama bin Laden and his terrorist activities, none of it identified the time, place, and specific nature of the attacks that were pl uh, planned for September 11, 2001. Continuing, another paragraph. It was the general view of the intelligence community in the spring and summer of 2001 that the threatened uh, bin Laden attacks would most likely occur against U.S. interests overseas despite indications of plans uh, to attack in the domestic United States. Another paragraph. During 1999, the National Security Agency obtained a number of communications, none of which included specific detail regarding the time, place, or nature of the September 11 attacks. Connecting individuals to terrorism were identified after September 11, 2001, as participants in the attacks that occurred on that day. So, did anybody bother to check and interview Michael Reconosuto? No. They did interview him. They did nothing with the information. Now, going back to September 11, 19, 2001, I have in front of me a um, report that uh, it reflects uh, an interview uh, on uh, October 28, 2001, by Mr. Dan Rather, he is a CBS News anchor, and he was interviewing a fellow named Tom Kennedy, a member of the Federal Emergency Management. And during the interview, Mr. Kennedy let slip a frightening truth. FEMA sent the urban search and rescue teams to New York City on, hey, wait a minute, Monday night. Monday night was September the 10th, not September the 11th. In connection with 911, a firefighter on the 76th floor and another one on the 84th floor radioed down before its collapse that the steel was not melting, but bombs were going off. It's also interesting to note that on CBS News, September the 26th, 2001, it was reported that put options put options were 90 times above the normal from sept uh, September the 6th through the 10th of 2001 on United Airlines stock, and it was 285 times higher on Thursday before the attack. On American Airlines stock, on September the 10th, the day before 2001, American Airlines uh, put options were 60 times above the normal. It's an al also an interesting to note that La Figaro, a French newspaper, reported that the CIA met with bin Laden in July of 2001, just a month before the attacks, and the conferences took place from July 4th until July 14th. Now, again, going back to Michael Reconosuto, how would he develop this information while he's in prison? He developed it through his contacts in the Muslim world, after he met with bin Laden in the spring of 1986, okay, number one. Number two, he had access to a computer, 
at one time when he was in the uh, federal system. And also, he has ways of developing information and receiving information in the prison, uh, which are unknown to the authorities.